Welcome to your Newsmax Daily for a busy Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024, or 4-2-24, the 83rd day of the year, the 14th Tuesday of the year, and the first of five Tuesdays this month. I hope yours is going well. Today is World Autism Awareness Day, a very important day established by the UN General Assembly in 2007. And international news is topping the headlines today as seven aid workers including an American, were killed in an Israeli airstrike in Gaza overnight as the Israel-Hamas war rages on. They were working to bring aid to Palestinians in the region. This is Israel Defense Forces spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, who you've seen on Newsmax before. I just spoke to WCK founder Chef Jose Anders and expressed the deepest condolences of Israel Defense Forces to the families and the entire World Central Kitchen family. The organization World Central Kitchen was founded by celebrity chef Jose Andres, who said in a statement that a convoy of three vehicles carrying food and staff members were in a de-conflicted zone when it was attacked. More from the Israeli spokesman. We will get to the bottom of this and we will share our findings transparently. We also express sincere sorrow to our allied nations who have been doing and continue to do so much to assist those in need. And this all comes after the other big news that Israeli airstrikes in Syria killed a top commander and seven other members of Iran's Revolutionary Guard near Iran's embassy in Damascus. This is Army Green Beret and Florida Congressman Mike Waltz on this morning's Wake Up America. Now, after a top military commander was killed, Iran has vowed to respond to the attack. For more on this, let's welcome in Florida Congressman Mike Waltz this morning. Congressman, good morning to you. Good morning. Good to be with you. You too. So what do you make of this and what do you think an Iranian response looks like? Well, I would only wish that the Biden administration had the same guts uh, as the Israelis do because they know the Israelis know the heart of the problem. The real disease here is Iran. Uh, Iran is behind Hezbollah in Lebanon. It's behind Hamas in Gaza. It's behind the Houthis that are attacking international shipping uh, in Yemen. And it's behind the militias in Iraq that have attacked our bases over 100 times. And a reminder to everyone, our people are in uh, Iraq in small numbers to keep a lid on ISIS, which is exploding uh, back on the scene. So rather than doing what the Biden administration is doing, which is swatting at all of these different groups, exhausting our military and letting them be target practice, they're going to the root cause of the problem, which are these Iranian IRGC trainers, advisors, mentors that are supplying cash, money and training to all of these terrorist groups. Mm -hmm. Israel took seven of them out, uh, two of them very senior. Uh, And I think that was a smart move on the Israelis' part. Yeah, and in the case of an Iranian response, which, again, this morning we're learning will happen, we just don't know how it will happen or when it will happen, what could that mean for the U.S. in all of this and our ally, Israel? Well, what the, uh, the Iranian response will likely be is to trigger Hezbollah to Israel's north in Lebanon, which is far uh, more dangerous, better armed and numerous than Hamas is in Gaza. Mm -hmm. They've been holding that over the Israelis' head, and I expect to see that violence uh, increase and those attacks increase. But look, Israel already has over 100,000 of its people that have had to, to become refugees that are displaced from their homes and their communities in northern Israel because of the fighting that's already occurring. Unfortunately, I fear that's going to be the next, uh, you know, the the front in this battlefield where Iran has unleashed what it calls a circle of fire uh, around Israel. Mm. Uh, What will this administration do? Look, the biggest way this administration could help Israel is cut off the cash in Iran. The irony here is Iran is selling its oil to China. Ninety percent of its oil is going to China. So it's really Chinese money flowing into Iran and then funding all of these terrorist groups. We, the House uh, of Representatives, Republican in the House have passed sanctions on Chinese brokers, buyers, shippers. Uh, at the end of the day, it's the cash 
uh, that um, from oil, from Iranian oil, uh, that is fueling all of this. And then secondarily, let's unleash American oil and gas, North American oil and gas from Canada, from the United States, from Mexico. If we drive the price of oil down, not only does Tehran suffer uh, and its terrorist proxies, but Moscow and Putin suffers mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of fueling its war. At the end of the day, this is about bad energy policy from Joe Biden. It's about his climate agenda that uh, when you constrict American oil and gas, you raise the price of it around the world and it fuels our enemies. Florida Congressman and veteran Michael Waltz on Wake Up America. I'm sure the White House will have a statement, especially since one of the seven aid workers killed was an American. And President Biden had a virtual meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday. This after Netanyahu canceled his visit to the White House last week, which you didn't hear that much about. We were able to reschedule this on Friday and we wanted to move very quickly on this. And today the, the meeting is happening virtually. Press Sec Corinne Jean-Pierre in yesterday's briefing. Former Navy Rear Admiral John Kirby, the National Security Council's Strategic Communications Coordinator, the guy with the longest title in all of Washington, will likely join today's White House press briefing uh, this afternoon, especially after yesterday's briefing and the White House Easter egg roll, where the fallout from the administration's promotion of a transgender day of visibility on Easter Sunday continued. As a Christian... Uh, who celebrates Easter with family, President Biden stands for bringing people together and upholding the dignity and freedoms of every American. Now, sadly, and it's not surprising, right? It is actually unsurprising that politicians are seeking to divide and weaken our country with cruel, hateful, and dishonest rhetoric. It is dishonest what we have heard the past 24 hours. It is untrue what we heard over the weekend. Corinne Jean-Pierre defending her boss, President Biden, who only made it worse by saying he didn't sign off on the transgender day of visibility, even though we all saw the official White House statement. Every year for the past several years, on March 31st, trans transgender day of visibility is marked. And as we know, for folks who understand the calendar and how it works, Easter falls on different Sundays, right, every year. And this year, it happened to coincide with trans, uh, Transgender Visibility Day. Apparently, the entire month of June for LGBTQ plus LMNOP appreciation wasn't enough. They had to take Easter, too. Michael Savage, host of the Michael Savage podcast, joins me now. Sir, this must have really ticked you off. Well, first of all, I, I did a whole podcast on, on it yesterday. I got so mad because it, it violates my birthday, which is March 31st. Well, happy That's birthday, the main sir. Problem. That's the main problem. But in addition to that, it spits in the face of every Christian, whether they are devout or not. Now, now they're saying that it just happened to have fallen on that day. But no POTUS in history has ever taken <clears throat> Easter Sunday and said, we celebrate transgenders today, other than this psychopath in the White House. This is mass hysteria combined with dementia, combined with political errors, by the way, the good news here is that the Democrats are making one error after another. What they did here was alienate every Christian in the country by what they did yesterday. And no matter how they use that freak press secretary to try to cover it up, they're telling us we don't know how to read a calendar. Did you hear our arrogance? Yeah, Those of you arrogant. who know how to read a calendar will understand this. No, we don't understand this. You took a sacred holiday the most sacred Christian holiday next to Christmas. And what you did was you had your POTUS stand up there and say, we're celebrating transgender activities today. So that's what actually happened. Now, the question is, how did this suddenly come about? What they are doing now was considered a medical crime in the 1960s to do this to children, this transition surgery and such, Carl. We don't have the time for all of this, but the monsters behind the trans movement would have you believe that any teen who believes he or she is born in the wrong body, should have their body surgically mutilated. And then there are doctors who are doing it for huge profits. This is a psychopathic mass hysteria combined with an evil I've never seen in my lifetime. And so, no, this has nothing to do with people who like to dress up like the opposite right. sex in order to identify it. It has to do with an attack upon our culture. Remember my motto, borders language culture. They destroyed our borders. They're destroying our culture. 
And of course, the language has been so bastardized with rap music and other uh, elements such as that. We hardly have an English language anymore. Yeah, well, and that, that goes to the fact that Bibles were literally set on fire yesterday. I mean, literally yes. set on fire. We yes. can take a look at this here. They're put in a trailer and they were torched. That what, like, look, this is coming from the same party that's like, Republicans want to burn books. No, they don't. Liberals are actually burning the book. But who did he do it in a church or did he bought the Bibles and burned them, this idiot, this moron, this psychopath? Who did it? Yeah, it was outside of I a mean, church. But they were the Bibles he bought and he burned. Right. Did he do it to any Korans, by the way? Did he burn a cart full of Korans? Oh, oh heavens Out, no. Outside a mosque? What would happen? You're a former warrior. What would have happened if he burned a bunch of mosques, a, a, excuse me, a bunch of books outside a mosque? There would be riots in the streets, Mike. Well, I, I rest my case. Mass hysteria combined with dementia, combined with the most evil president in American history. I can't mince words anymore, Carl. We're way past getting along with the other side. There is no other side. There's either America or the end of America. It's that simple. Newsmax host Carl Higby with the great Michael Savage, whose radio show was on some of the most listened to, most popular radio stations in the country for many years, and eventually had to go to podcasting so he could keep saying what he really wants to say. And this is for Monday's American Agenda with Bob Brooks and Katrina Zish. Well, I know there's a lot of people out there, Katrina, that don't agree with her explanation yes. of things right 100%. now. Our first guest is one of them, outraged, like many Americans, over the Biden administration marking Easter Sunday as, quote, transgender day of visibility. That is Iowa Congresswoman Ashley Hinson writing on X. This is not a coincidence. It's clear this administration has so much contempt for Christians and people of faith. What a slap in the face. Representative Ashley Hinson joins us now to discuss. Congresswoman, happy to have you on. Happy Easter uh, to you as well. Wanted to get your, your thoughts just quickly, though, about the International Transgender Day of Visibility. I know people outraged as, as you were, understandably. But then again, the International Transgender Day of Visibility started back in 2009. So what is it particularly about how the Biden administration handled this that has you and so many people infuriated. Yeah, well, uh, Katrina and Bob, good to be with you. I think uh, it comes down to, you can take a look at the calendar and know it's the wrong decision. Uh, Easter is the holiest day for Christians. I know I spent the day yesterday with my family at our church celebrating resurrection of our, our dear Lord and Savior. Um, and it is, it's the biggest celebration day for Christians. And so to be so out of touch and tone deaf about those two things uh, colliding, um, I think we saw that in, in the press secretary's response there. Um, they are just completely out of touch with, with Americans and um, I certainly felt that yesterday, and I, I've heard that from a lot of people here in the district, too. Congresswoman, do you think this was an accident? They knew, or at least they had yeah. to have known, but they went ahead with it anyways. What do you think? Yeah, well, and it's interesting. I saw a tweet uh, from, I think, the president's response. Somebody tweeted out that he didn't even realize he'd done it. Um, somebody in the White House did it. Let's be real here. Um, and again, you can look at a calendar. You know that Easter Sunday is the holiest of days. Um, so instead of saying, hey, let's send out a strong Easter message in support of all the millions of Christians in this country and around the world, let's just go ahead and celebrate a national trans day. Um, I think that, again, that uh, split screen that we saw coming out of the Biden administration, this is just the latest um, uh, latest incident of that. I think sometimes all of us look at these tweets coming out, we're like, is this the onion or is this the White House? I mean, it's, it's kind of gotten to the point where it's just the latest in a string of hits, right? Right. Uh, Congresswoman, President Biden also banned religious artwork from today's Easter egg roll. Doesn't seem like the actions of someone who uh, traditionally describes himself as a devout Catholic. Many people actually uh, saying, not really, you're kind of more of a cafeteria Catholic. Those are the words that have been being thrown around. Your reaction? Well, I can tell you this, that I would still encourage my kids to paint the cross if they felt that that was what they wanted to do. Um, I think this is a actually a violation of the First Amendment, which we want to welcome all religions in this country. And that's what they claim to be all about. So I think that, again, those two things are, are not adding up here. And I think it's, a again, I'm looking forward to next year's Easter egg roll, where we're going to have President Trump in the White House and all faiths will be recognized. That's Iowa Congresswoman Ashley Hinson, and there is a bit of misunderstanding with the Easter egg decorating issue. According to the president and CEO of the American Egg Board, coming to President Biden's rescue here, says they have overseen the White House Easter egg roll and decorating contest for some 40 years. 
And if you read the fine print, their guidelines for the contest have stated all along that there would be no questionable content, religious symbols, themes, or partisan political statements allowed on the eggs. With that, we go to Greg Kelly. You know, I hear from the left, they're trying to say, well, Donald Trump did the same thing. No, he didn't. He did not. Yeah, they had the Easter egg roll. Now, they are maintaining that in the fine print of the application, it said the same thing about the religious theme. Now, he didn't okay that. I know that. But what's happening today is very much in line with what the Biden administration is. And if that actual fine print was around when Donald Trump was president, that just shows you again that the deep state is a real thing. And they are at war with religion, with Christianity. I mean, it's like... They prepare all the paperwork and presidents just come in and sign the stuff that they've actually worked out. That's not democratic. And our country is truly not a democracy anymore, it seems like. Now, Trump did the Easter thing, but he also did this. He also had the nerve to hold up a Bible outside of a church. And we remember what they tried to do to him for that moment. Hey, you know who was right way before I realized he was right? Bill O'Reilly. He warned us that there was a war on Christmas. I kind of thought at the time, well, give me a break. It's a little bit overdone, Bill. No, he was right. And now it's a full on like thermonuclear war on religion. Thank you, Bill O'Reilly. And thank you, President Trump. And quite frankly, wow, what do you say about Joe Biden? Oh, do we have this? Hunter was at the White House today. Hunter Biden was shadowing his dad at the White House at the Easter egg roll. Now, Hunter's children are like, they graduated from law school already. What is he doing there? What's that all about? It's Monday. It's not a holiday. I hear he's sober. I know he was working when he was drunk and high. So what's this something? Something. There is no one, no one else asking that question making that observation. And it's a very good question. Why is Hunter there? What is he doing there on the South Lawn with the children? Thank you, Greg Kelly. Maybe he was there asking the big guy what he should do now after a federal judge rejected his request to dismiss his nine-count tax indictment. No one else is going to tell you about this either. Remember Hunter pleaded guilty to not paying more than a half a million dollars in taxes, and his lawyers then argued to drop the charges, citing political pressure, yada yada, while the judge denied all the motions filed by Hunter's attorneys, and the case is still set to go to trial on June 20th. The other big news today is that former President Donald Trump paid his $175 million bond in the New York civil fraud case last night. And the judge in the New York criminal case involving the payment to a porno star is again expanding his gag order on the former president. Back to Greg Kelly. He is totally entitled to say whatever he wants about the judge, about his daughter, about anything. This is still America, right? Judge Mershon is going to at least schedule to preside over the, um, what case is that again? April 15th, two weeks from today, the Michael Cohen, uh, the non-disclosure thing, Stormy Daniels and the rest. Well, Donald Trump has pointed out that this judge has some issues, some conflicts. Let's go through them. And Donald Trump pointed this out on Truth Social words. Do you have a problem with any of this? You shouldn't. Judge Mershon should be immediately sanctioned and recused. Okay. Judge Juan Mershon, a very distinguished looking man, (laughs) is nevertheless a true and confirmed Trump hater who suffers from a serious case of Trump derangement syndrome. All right. I buy it. Judge Juan Mershon is totally compromised and should be removed from this Trump non-case immediately. All right. His daughter, Lauren, who is 34 years old, by the way, okay, it's not like she's in fourth grade, is a rabid Trump hater who has admitted to having conversations with her father about me, and yet he gagged me? She's allowed to do that, totally, but it suggests the judge is not neutral. And you're allowed to point this out. And what we just saw might be harsh, might be not nice, 
but it's not dangerous. These words are not a threat. And that's what they say, the word threat. They're lying to everybody, maybe even themselves. Trump's words are clearly intended to intimidate, threaten, and incite violence against the people he names in the words coming out of his mouth. Trump made threats against the judge and his daughter. Running off his mouth and, and threatening a family member of a judge or a clerk of a judge or a judge himself. Trump is doing what he always does, making threats, calling out his so-called enemies and their loved ones. No, I just went through it. These are not threats. They're lying. They are misleading. This is like mass hypnosis they're trying to do. It's not true. And the level of dishonesty, I mean, this is previously a prestigious show, Meet the Press. A long time ago, it was prestigious. And Kristen Welker, uh, she's the current it girl of the uh, moment, at least with the fake news. And watch what she did here. You just saw what President Trump said. These are not threats. Well, she lies. He has made uh, threatening statements about the daughter of this judge. Is that appropriate? Is it appropriate to be going after judges and their family members? You know, Kristen, these are not threats. Do you want to read it? Have you read it? Yeah, it's biting criticism, but we're allowed to do that. Greg Kelly is the host of Greg Kelly Reports. That's weeknights at 9 o'clock Eastern on Newsmax. And Rob Schmidt spoke about the case with Arizona Senate candidate Carrie Lake. It's Mm. amazing to me that the the fact they can bring these cases is one thing. Then the people presiding over them and the people bringing these cases are clearly political, uh, just like Tish James. And then you have a judge in this case whose daughter is this is a part of her job. Uh, is politicizing this case. And we're supposed to believe that this guy has no, uh, is supposed to be fair and balanced. You start pulling the string and the web just, and the whole thing falls apart, right? And, you know, this uh, woman is obviously very much, his daughter is very much tied into the most leftist of all campaigns and outlets out there. I even found out that she's doing, uh, you know, going after me as well. Here I am, minding my own business, running for Senate in Arizona. And I found out I'm in her crosshairs as well. So they're going after all of the people who are true fighters in our movement. They want the status quo. They want the uniparty. They want leftist rule in Washington, D.C. It's not surprising. We have so much corruption in our court system right now. I mean, one of the judges out here that has overseen some of my cases, her sister writes at least three to five nasty opinion pieces on me in the paper every single week. So it is a tangled web they have woven, and I think it's starting to unweave itself. And it's really, really fun to watch this kind of fall apart right in their faces. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's amazing that people are not, that there's not more general outrage to something like this. I mean, the story yeah. that I just read should be in every newspaper. It should be on every channel. I mean, this is so blatant. You're dealing, you're talking about somebody that's running for president. You're talking about things you see in authoritarian countries. And the fact that this is just a sidebar, right. you know, on, on, on this, you know, and it's a big story on this network. It's a sidebar everywhere else. I, I it's just, I can't but Rob. It. Yeah. You and I know we worked in the media for many years. You're, yeah. you're working for one of the good guys now. The fake news media is part of the problem. Yeah. They're part of the cover up. They lie. They cover stories that don't matter and leave the ones that do matter out of the news cycle. And they are when President Trump, Trump says the enemy of the people. I have to agree with him on that. In so many ways, they're keeping us uh, the true information we need from us. Yeah. And, and then the more you see, the, the worse and worse it gets and the more that that statement is proven true. That's Rob Schmidt, host of Rob Schmidt Tonight with former news anchor and Arizona Senate candidate Carrie Lake on Wall Street the second day of the second quarter starting deep in the red today after the first quarter rally that I talked about yesterday came to a grinding halt with the Dow Jones Industrial Average losing 240 points on Monday. Big business story, the U.S. Postal Service announcing that it will be switching cargo providers from FedEx to UPS in September when the current contract expires. Big news for both of those companies. Keep an eye on those stocks. And Donald Trump's Trump media and technology stock took a big hit yesterday along with a lot of other technology stocks. DJT declined 21% on Monday. A lot of people that are for and against that stock are, of course, keeping a close eye on it. 
Be sure to keep up with all of the news all day and night on Newsmax. It is available on most major cable systems. And make sure you're streaming on the new Newsmax Plus. Go to NewsmaxPlus.com. You can get a free trial. It includes all of your favorite shows and hosts like Rob Schmidt tonight, Greg Kelly reports, Eric Bowling, Greta Van Susteren, Frontline with Carl Higby, Wake Up America, and more with fantastic analysis from people like Carrie Lake, Governor Mike Huckabee, Go- uh, Hogan Gidley, law expert Alan Dershowitz, and others. NewsmaxPlus.com. Thank you, as always, for listening to the Newsmax Daily. I'm Tony Marino. Enjoy the rest of your day, and keep on fighting the good fight. News breaks every minute, every day. You need the app, the Newsmax app. Find it free on your smartphone store. Then watch us anytime, anywhere. Greg Kelly over at Newsmax. The Newsmax people have been really, really terrific. Newsmax has been terrific. President Trump is right. Millions are tired of Fox, and they're switching to Newsmax+. Plus. It's the fastest-growing streaming service in America. You don't need woke Disney and Hulu anymore. Just get Newsmax+. Plus. Watch the best shows like Greg Kelly, Rob Schmidt, Greta Van Susteren, and Eric Bowling, And get incredible analysis from Dick Morris, Alan Dershowitz, Carrie Lake, Mike Huckabee, and more. It's free to start. So go to NewsmaxPlus.com now to sign up. And watch Newsmax anytime, anywhere.